Hello, this is Randy Orwin with the Information School at the University of Washington. I'm the Assistant Director for Learning Technologies, and I'd like to walk you through the process of setting up and managing Zoom meetings inside of Canvas. This will show creating rooms, but also what to do to make sure that your students can actually view and potentially download any recordings that you have made in that meeting. Okay, to get started, log into your Canvas course and then you'll notice that there is a zoom link on the left nav bar here now if you don't see that zoom link it's probably hidden so you can come down here to settings and make sure you're on the navigation tab and if the zoom link isn't showing up up here at the top it will actually be down here at the bottom and you can either uh, use the three dots out to the side and say enable and then it will put it up here at the top at the bottom Or you can just drag it up onto the top if it doesn't exist And then make sure that you click save at the bottom of that page when you get there So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into the zoom LTI interface and You'll notice that there are a number of things on this page of course the schedule a new meeting button there at the top uh, you have the upcoming meetings previous meetings Personal meeting room, just a quick note about personal meeting rooms. Never use your personal meeting room for a class. There's some security risks with that. You just don't ever want to use your personal meeting room. And then you have access to the cloud recordings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on schedule a new meeting. And this brings up the schedule a new meeting process. So I'll just give this uh, name here. Zoom LTI test. Uh, you could give it a meeting description if you like, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, this is going to be a recurring class, so this is one scenario. So I'm actually going to start this class, and I'm going to make it because I want it to be a once-a-week, three-hour class in the evening. So we'll do from 5.30, and this is going to be three hours. And then I'm going to click this recurring meeting option here. So I click on that. And then I have a number of options. I can do daily, but I can also set it up to do uh, a weekly one, a monthly one. Or if you just want to use this room all the time, you can go no fixed time. But in this particular one, I'm going to do it weekly. And I know that my course occurs on Thursday nights. So we're just going to turn on Thursday. And I know that there are going to be nine instances of this class throughout the quarter. And it gives me uh, an end date or I'm going to say after nine instances. Then I have some options down here at the bottom. Um, I'm not going to talk about registration. That's a whole another different video. But I generally turn on video for myself as the host and for uh, my participants, so my students. That helps us build a little bit of connection between the students and myself and then student to student so they can see each other's faces. I always leave audio to both, so if they need to phone in, they can phone in or they can use their computer audio. But then here's where we get into some of the different things for setting up your meeting. These meeting options. You have a couple of options. You can require a password and that will make a difference, so we'll talk about that. By default, enable join before host is turned on. And what that means is if students log into your Zoom room, then they're in your room. They're just hanging out and they're waiting for you to be there. But you'll notice that also enable waiting room is turned on by default. It doesn't make any sense to have enable waiting room and enable join before host because they're all they're going to end up uh, in a waiting room no matter what. Or they're going to see this message that says this meeting hasn't been started yet. I'm going to turn off enable join before host because that doesn't make any sense because they're going to be put in a waiting room anyway. Mute participants upon entry. I always leave this turned on and that way if a student comes in late or a, a participant comes in late and their microphone is turned on, it doesn't disturb what's happening in the meeting. So I just turn their mics off by default when they enter the room. Security wise, we have this require a meeting password. We have authenticated users and enable waiting room. If you have a waiting room enabled, um, usually I don't require a meeting password if I have uh, a waiting room enabled because I can actually manage who comes in whenever I want them to. But as an additional layer of security, you can actually do a require meeting password. And I'll show you what this looks like. So we'll set a password. And then 
The other option for UW is only authenticated users can join. My recommendation is, if at all possible, you want to turn this on and you want to use the default setting here, which is um, use the UW Net ID. Now, there may be a situation where you want to bring in a guest lecturer or bring in a panel for a panel discussion, and they may not be from um, UW. And so you have another uh, option here that you could go in and say, sign in to Zoom, but a UW Net ID is not required. And then students will still need to use their UW Net ID to log into Zoom but your guests can create a free Zoom account and then they can actually use that account to log in. So you still have that required login into the Zoom environment itself. For now, I'm just going to leave it as the net ID required. And then I'm going to save here. Now I want to point out when this comes back, you're still in the, you can see the configuration for your room uh, you have at the bottom. You can actually import some CSV files to create polls and the likes. But the one I want to point out is this invite attendees right here. And you'll notice that here's the URL to join your room. And in this URL, you'll notice that in the middle of the URL, it says PWD equals. That's your password encoded into the URL. So you don't ever have to give students the password. You can still see the password down here but your students will never have to see that password. And you can just give them this URL that will let them into the room just by clicking on this. So this is really important to understand how this works. All right, so I'm going to go back to the list of meetings. So now this is my list of meetings out here. And we can see these are all the meetings that have been generated when I uh, put this together. I can always go back in and edit this meeting again later so if I need to make a change I can edit this meeting and run it that way so now let's take a look at the student side here what the student will see all right so I'm, I'm on the student view I'm logged into my canvas course and we can see a couple of things we can see out here we have all this list of meetings zoom LTI tests this actually if you click on one of these it goes to the actual calendar in your course so if I click here opens it up on the calendar and I see all of my uh, Zoom uh, meetings. So if I click on a meeting, it shows me the Zoom URL. So if I mouse over this URL and I look down in the lower left hand corner of my screen, I can actually see that URL that has the PWD equals in the middle of that of the URL. So that tells me that password is going to get passed into Zoom automatically. So I don't actually have to give my students a password. So let's go back to uh, the home page here on this course and I also have the access through zoom on the left hand navigation bar and now I see all of these meetings are already pre-configured and ready to go so students can just come into the zoom link and they can say join and add to that meeting they can be logged in or they can actually go to the calendar links that are out here on the right hand side and that will take them into that same zoom meeting Let's go back to the instructor side of this and let's actually make a quick recording so we can talk about how recordings work in the Zoom meeting. So we'll click on start and I'm going to say open Zoom and here we go. So I've set a background for actually this particular meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unmute my microphone and I'm just going to do a quick recording of just what we're seeing on the screen right now. So I just click record. And I have the option of recording to this computer. Uh, and if you do that, it will just record everything that's happening on the screen to a single file plus an audio file on your text chat to your local computer. And then you can upload that wherever you want to put it. But I'm going to record this one to the cloud because you have a lot more options when you record to the cloud. So I'm going to click to the cloud. That's going to pop up. It's going to record uh, what little bit we have here. And then I'm going to say I'm done with this recording. I'm going to say, yep, that's done. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to end this meeting. I've done my, my recording. And then I'm going to come back here. And this will show cloud recordings once they've been uh, processed. 
So we'll just go ahead and we'll wait for that meeting to be processed and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to go to Cloud Recordings. And we can now see the Zoom LTI test topic. So basically that's the title of uh, my room uh, when I put that in there. And if I'm going to have students actually see this, then I have to publish this. And so I can just go out here and I can say uh, publish, or I'll show you what it looks like on the student side. So let's go to the student side. I'm going to go back in here to students. I'm going to go to Zoom. I'm going to go to cloud recordings. Nothing there. So I actually have to make sure that I actually turn those cloud recordings on. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say publish. So that will now show up to the students. And uh, I'll show you what this looks like from my end as an instructor. So I'll click on this video and I get an option to download or share. But if I play it back, it pops up. It's going to start to play. But, and you'll notice up here in this top right hand corner, it says download. So I have an option to download both there. And then when I see the, um, the Zoom video here, it gives me an option to download. And this is important. I want to show you why. So we'll go back in and so we've we've made sure that we've published this file right here. So I'm going to go into the student view again. And we'll just click the zoom link one more time. And then we're going to go into cloud recordings. And now we can see that that recording actually shows up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that recording up. Uh, you'll notice that there is no download button on this one. So I can just either play the video with the audio or just the audio only. So I'm going to pop this open and it automatically logs me in with my NetID since I'm already logged into Canvas. And I can see that this recording is there. So I can pop this open and that starts to play. So there's that recording that I did, but I have no option anywhere to actually download this file. And this is really important. You may have some students who don't have enough bandwidth to actually play it back and without having to download it. So if you want your students to be able to download this, then we have to actually do uh, a little bit of extra work here. So I'm going to go back to the faculty side of this. And you'll notice that in this interface, if I tick this box here, it, the only options I have are to delete. I don't have any option to make it so that though that recording can be downloaded. So what I have to do if I'm going to set it up to be downloaded by the students, then I have to go out and I have to go into the Zoom web portal. So I'm going to log into the web portal here. So I've gone to washington.zoom.us. I haven't logged into the portal yet, so you'll see this option. Unless you work in the medical school, you want to use this um, standard UW Zoom on the left hand side. So we pop this open and this takes me into Zoom. It shows the meetings that I've already created, but I don't want to look at meetings. I want to look at recordings. So here's my list of recordings. And so this, the earliest recording here is at the top, this Zoom LTI test that we just did. And there, if I click on it, I get kind of the similar uh, playback thing. So I have some options here to playback. But I want to actually make this so that my students can download it. So there's a share button out here on the right hand side. I'm going to click this share button and it's going to pop this open and it's going to show me that you have to have a UW net ID in order to view that. But I have this option here. Viewers can download. So if I click that button uh, and then it says share settings have changed. We're good to go and we're done. So now I can go ahead and close that out. And let's go back over and see what that does to the student view. So I go into this student view here and I'll go back and we'll go back to cloud recordings. We're going to go ahead and open this up and we're going to click on this recording and it's going to pop open. And you're going to notice now up in the top right hand corner, we have the ability to download this recording. This is really important. So now your students can download and play it offline. So that kind of covers everything about creating and managing um, the recordings and also setting up the Zoom room in your course.
Hopefully you find this helpful.